Very good afternoon to everyone. I Priya Yadav from DM Media School welcome you all to the Vibrant India series episode 51. I also welcome all our viewers who are watching us live on Facebook. Vibrant India series. VIS, it's an initiative of DM Media School for celebrating the 75 years of India's independence. This series will be a year-long exercise. As part of this series, we invite inspiring personalities for online talk, interview and interaction with our students. The invited personality for this series are from all walks of life and from all part of the country. And today, our guest is Mr. Joydeep Mukherjee, multi-instrumentalist and acclaimed performer, reviver of rare music instruments. We welcome you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very I, much. I would like to take a moment and introduce Delhi Metropolitan Education to our viewers. Delhi Metropolitan Education, DME, is an A-grade premier educational institute affiliated to Guru Gobind Singh in Prasla University, New Delhi, and approved by the Bar Council of India. The institute offers BBA, BALB, BBLLB with BCI approval and BAJMC programs. DME believes in imparting world-class education to its students while training them to develop and enhance their skills. This education and training enables them in taking up challenges of the industry and creating a space for themselves with their competence and vigor. DAB Media School is one of the most promising media institute in the country. It offers BA in journalism and mass communication. It is recognized as a school focused on the growth of its faculty and students through academic and co-curricular activities. Major flagship events and initiative of the school include PG Varghese Lecture Series, Peer-to-Peer -peer FGP, International Film Festival CP, International Conference ICANN and Vritika Convention of Media Students. And newly added to the list is BIS, Vibrant India Series. It's a privilege to introduce the personality of episode 51 for the VIS, Joydeep Mukherjee. Joydeep Mukherjee is a B.Tech Information Technology from Mulana Abul Kalam Azad University. He has done MBA from Symbiosis Pune, Mr. Mukherjee served in the marketing research and consulting industry for 11 years. He is con uh, currently pursuing PhD from Kolkata. Joydeep Mukherjee started learning Sarod from the age of four. Mr. Mukherjee is a regular graded artist of All India Radio and Doordarshan. He is an impelled artist of ICCR. He is an approved artist of Sangeet Natak Academy. Joydeep Mukherjee is is regarded as the reviver of rare instruments. He has received laurels all over the world from his, for his contribution in the field of music. In August 22, Mr. Mukherjee was featured in Indian Book of Records and Asian Book of Records. For his pioneering work, he is torch bearer of the senior, Sehzanpur Garhana. Joydeep Mukherjee has brought new light in the Indian cultural scenario. Thank you, sir, for joining us today. It was in, an indeed to honor. Now, I would like to request our technical team to please play the AV. <music> joining today. It is indeed an honor to host you. I now request Dr. Susmita Bala, 
here at DMU Media School to welcome the guest. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Ishika. Welcome everybody to episode 51 of Vibrant India series. We launched this digital program in 2021 on August 9, on the anniversary of Quit India Movement. And we presented episode 50 of this program this year on August 15, when India celebrated 76th Independence Day. Vibrant India series is an initiative of DME Media School, Delhi Metropolitan Education. It is an online series to get inspiration from distinguished personalities. This program has been conceptualized and created by Professor Ambrish Saxena. Vibrant India series is a tribute to all those people who have made supreme sacrifices for the independence of our motherland. This program is a part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahasar, a celebration on India completing 75 years of independence. Let us have a look at the eminent personalities who have graced the BIS during the last one year. Eight personalities from the Defense Forces have participated in BIS till date. These personalities belong to the Indian Army, Air Force and BSF. Five personalities from the education sector comprising education planning, teaching and research have participated in VIS. Four personalities from the journalism, broadcasting and entertainment sectors have joined the VIS. Two senior journalists, one personality from entertainment and animation industry and one commentator. From the social sector, seven personalities including six women have participated in VIS a medical doctor, an educationist, an entrepreneur, a social activist, an environmental activist, and also Padmashri Jitender Singh Shanti, the founder of Bhagga Singh Seva Dal and a Corona warrior. Seven personalities belong to art, theater, and literature participated in VIS, Two personalities from the field of law and human rights have graced the BIS session. 14 women have participated in 50 episodes of BIS. Six women working in the social, social sector, one in the Air Force, one in human rights, one in theater, one pilot, one adventure motorcyclist, a mountaineer, an entrepreneur, and one cancer survivor and cancer coach participated in BIS. Three police officers have participated in BIS. Three senior IES officers have also based the BIS. And from the different fields, Mr. S. P. Rawal, author, Mr. Augustine Vellet, communication specialist, Sufi Sayyid Azmal Nizami, custodian of Sufi Dargah Nizamuddin Aliya, and Mr. Balindu Sharma Dadhiji, director local languages and accessibility in Microsoft, and Mr. Satish Satsina, an accomplished runner, mental health expert and blogger and poet also have participated in VIS. Today, in episode 51, we have with us an amazing personality, Mr. Joy Deep Mukherjee, an engineer by profession and a musician by passion. He has revived all music instruments of India. So welcome Mr. Joy Deep in episode 51 of Why Ten India series. And welcome you all. Thank you. Uh, a very good afternoon to everyone, all the students, DMAP, Ambri sir, and I'm very thankful for DME Media School for inviting me for this series. A very good afternoon, and I hope that uh, the 
Azadi Ka Amrit Mahatsav has been a very successful event at your institution also. Yes. A lot of brilliant students. Mr. Mr. Jordi, um, just a minute, just wait for a minute. Uh, Ishika will take it forward. Ishika. Sir, thank you, ma'am, for listing out the galaxy of experts we have hosted till now in VIS. I now request Dr. Ambri Saxena, the Indian Media School, the originator and writer of VIS, to take the program forward. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Ishika. So the stage has already been set uh, for uh, today's uh, episode of Vibrant India series, and uh, all have been said and done as to uh, what all this series is about. Uh, uh, but then to, to repeat in a line that this uh, is a series that we started to showcase the work uh, that uh, a lot of good people are doing in this country and which is actually inspirational since we are an educational institution. So our basic objective is uh, to keep our students motivated and to ensure that they have interaction with all such people whose personalities are inspiring and there is uh, something to take away uh, from whatever work those people have done. So uh, we, we have planned 75 episodes and already uh, we were able to complete 50 episodes of this program on 15th of August only. And we are trying to approach uh, uh, all such people who are working in different walks of life. Uh, so music is again one a very important area in everybody's life. Uh, so that is how we requested Professor uh, Joydeep uh, to be part of this uh, program. And he readily agreed, so we are obliged for that. And uh, Joydeep, as the, this program, this whole format is uh, about, uh, after this uh, initial segment, uh, in the next segment, we will request you uh, to please uh, narrate your life journey with all your experiences. Uh, we would also like to listen all those anecdotes which you might be having in uh, in, in your career uh, while you are performing somewhere here and outside. And uh, all those challenges as well, which uh, uh, were not able to, to, to stop you. So these are the things uh, uh, wherein if there is a challenge uh, in somebody's life and you are not uh, stopped and you move forward, Forward, and then you you try to get where you want to be and so all these are the things which could be an inspiration to all those young people who are there in the today's session so without further uh, delaying the session i will request uh, jody Mukherjee to you uh, to please uh, take it forward from here and uh, narrate your own life journey thank you very much sir thank you once again for inviting me you are itself an inspiration to a lot of person all around with the fantastic work that you are doing. Thank you. So, uh, just to start with uh, students, just look around the personalities who are taking your classes, who are arranging your lectures, and you will find a lot of inspirations among them. I mean, uh, just to start with the basic one, just look at the academic coordinator who is arranging the lectures. I mean, it takes a lot of credit to adding the routine. It, um, calling up the faculties, if there is a change in the schedule, arranging them, and these faculties are not those ones who are readily available. I mean, one have to take the appointments to bring them on. They also have to make the schedule. And just think that, uh, the way the thankless job that person he or she is doing at the background, who is maintaining your institution to move ahead. Then comes the uh, examination sector, arranging the examination, arranging the viva, focusing your work. I mean, there are a lot of inspirations that you can learn from your own institute. I mean, every, every faculty of yours, every staff of your institution, they have an inspiring story around you. See, when I uh, I was a student of engineering, see, frankly speaking, I was totally, uh, none of my family members were into the professional music. They were music lovers, but no one was there. I mean, I belong to a well-to-do family, a middle-class well-to-do family where, where my um, family members were the government servants. 
and uh, they also want me to get into the, into the job because the only thing which comes into my mind that what will happen to me how will i earn my living when they will attain the age of 60 so you have to earn for your own living because it is there is no kind of family business so i had to go for a formal schooling i had to uh, get into the most uh, short after course which is engineering and then after after engineering i worked for 6 months in accenture and then i found that writing the programs is not my cup of tea so what is the next thing that inside me so then communication management or or or, or, or advertising publicity because i found the creative things uh, uh, those things that can inspire me so next comes my mba in communication management so there i went into and you know that when i studied in symbiosis it was a uh, 14 to 16 hours of uh, only uh, lectures workshops and, and like that so one of the one of the interviews one of the interviewer had asked me that, that how can you carry out your music when you have lectures from 6 to from 6 in the morning to 10 in the evening so my reply was that when every day i am getting the chance to brush my teeth to have my breakfast to uh, have a bath so i will also get that amount of time and then after passing out from there i get into uh, the field of market research where uh, i was into the um, uh, business development plan servicing side and you know that whenever there is a business problem my number used to be in the fast dial list of the clients they used to just call me up say the brief i mean at that point of time whatsapp, WhatsApp was not that much very frequent but there was was smss okay so there were challenges but at the same point of time what i found that if you have the passion for something you will arrange the time for that for say for example when i was working in the office uh, there was a um, the security there were a lot of security guards all around the building and they used to stay in a dormitory so i had a word with them have made a uh, setting with them and i kept one of my instrument in their room okay so that maybe that uh, i am working till 8 o'clock in the in the evening and then i am ha having the planned meeting uh, from 10 o'clock in the night because we are having the multinational clients their time zones and our, our time zones were different so which means that two hour wasting and roaming around it is better to go downstairs into the dormitory practice your music come up and it went on for seven to eight years then until one fine day i thought that yes it is the right time to venture out into music it was a tough decision because uh, i was married i was having a, a two year old kid so his education i had a family my parents were uh, on pension so it was a tough decision to make but then i realized that i don't have any loans so it is one of the plus point so then i make the jump and i have only one criteria don't make the jump very blindly have to have plan b plan c and an absolutely workable plan a in the mind so say for example when i venture out, out in music the only thing that was into my mind that if i come to music i will make something different from the rest what the rest of the world is doing and so i thought to i thought that our own india our own country has a lot of uh, is a very very culturally rich i mean if you look at every state every state have their own culture own set of customs own set of music 
I mean the folk music of Rajasthan and the folk music of Bengal, they are completely different, but at the same point of time, they can attract any person across the globe because of the attractiveness that they have. So why not? There are a lot of musical instruments. Since I, I'm an instrumentalist, why not revive? There are a lot of instruments. I mean, hundreds of instruments which have gone extinct. So why not bring some of those instruments back to the limelight so that the people who haven't heard those instruments in the current times, they can get the taste. So it was, it just started like that. And maybe say four years or five years down the line. Now I can say that yes, it is going very successfully, though I have uh, other plans in my mind regarding other, reviving the other instruments, other, uh, other workshops. And not only that, whatever instruments that uh, I have revived, I will uh, uh, showcase to the rest of the country and also, and also to the rest of the world. Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Jodhi. Uh, will you continue or? Uh... Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, sir. Okay, 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 because I thought that uh, the connection went out. No, no, I'm sorry, okay. it's, it's all. So just, uh, I mean, um, whatever number of students that you are there, just think that which is the important uh, or what kind of work that inspired you the most. If you think of making a movie or making movies, inspired you. Everyone have a mobile phone. Just take the shots, do some edit, and try to build up your own set of audiences. Okay. So say for example, I had a small YouTube channel. Uh, one year back, the, the number of subscribers was only 10 to 15 because I haven't uploaded any videos. So then I thought that why not upload the videos of the instrument of the rare instruments? And suddenly I found that after one year, that 10 to 15 went up to around 1700 without any uh, promotions. Okay, so try to build up your audience and, and you will get a lot of people who will be supporting you. I mean, not every uh, not everyone will get the right kind of job. Not everyone will get the good job, but if you don't get, don't be disheartened. There are, are ups and downs in life. I have faced a lot of, uh, a lot of problems, but at the same point of time, I have realized that it is life. It is a long journey. So try to get your inspirations from the people around you. Try to devote the time that you are spending and make it meaningful. So that is all from my side. Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Jodip Ji, for uh, uh, telling us uh, all this uh, story. You summed up your uh, long journey in very, very brief, but uh, uh, we can understand that it's not so easy, the kind of work that you all have done. So I have few where is uh, to know more uh, about the work that you have done. Uh, firstly, uh, I would like to know uh, the, the, your performances that you have been making uh, in the country and outside. So uh, what have been your experience and if you can share uh, some of such uh, memories which you would like to share with us uh, while making your performances. Tim, uh... The memories are good in a word, but there are a lot of varieties. I mean, not every audience are the same. Okay. Sometimes uh, in many cases, I have found the audiences are very, very premium. They sit and listen to music. But at the same point of time, maybe in the next day, I am performing to a group of college goers. And you know that Indian classical music, uh, hitting the youngsters with Indian classical music, ma making them sit for one hour or 1.5 hours. Okay, so 
I mean, I always I look from the standpoint of the audience. Maybe because I was a marketing person, I have gone through a, a particular media um, schooling course. So that thing, that amount of understanding the audience coming up in front of them, I always think like that. When I have played in front of the uh, ministers and the bureaucrats, I know that they mm, will appreciate the good music, but they might not um, know the technicalities of the music. So better make the music appealing to them. Okay, say for example, every one of us know that um, once upon a time during the uh, reign of Samrat Akbar, Tansen used to sing Rag, Meg, and uh, Water used to come. So why not when I am playing Rag, Meg, speak it with the audience? Okay, and we can say that uh, whatever we have learned or whatever we have heard, it is in the books. It might be a myth, might not be a myth, but you can just imagine the flow of water. Okay, if you just... You know, Concentrate for five minutes, you can imagine that it is raining, and then you can uh, understand the value of the music. Okay, but this technique is not applicable for the college course or for the students. Say, for example, for the way when Speak Mackey organizes the program, then I have to play in front of the school students. Okay, and Hearing the classical music in front of them of class uh, six standard, seven standard, eight standard, 12 standard, or even in front of the college goers, it is a completely a different story. Okay, so I have to make my script accordingly. Uh, so that sense. they yeah, should, yeah. and the catch is that if you can hold the audience for five, 10 minutes, he will sit for half an hour. Yeah. Uh, so, as you said that your marketing skills and all that uh, experience has helped us in understanding your audience and making your performances accordingly. But may I ask how your uh, uh, knowledge and passion for music has helped you uh, in your profession as an engineer? Sorry, come again once more. How, how your knowledge and your experience in music has helped you in, 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 in helping uh, the, the persuasion of your profession, the engineering profession or the corporate work that you have been doing? See, uh, actually it was the reverse. My knowledge of engineering has helped me in music. My knowledge of marketing has helped me in music. It is just the reverse. Say, when I am working with the structure of any musical instruments, I can sh show some of those instruments. Yeah, so, yeah, please, please, please do that. We we would certainly like, and uh, uh, I would not only want to see the instruments, but certainly if you can explain to us, because you have done something different. The reviving an old uh, music instrument, it is not an easy thing. So what all had undergone when you decided to revive an instrument, what all you did as part of the revival, and then obviously if you can show us the instrument, then our understanding will be better. So this is called the saru. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Uh, uh, I can give a sound like this. The sound which it has, it is very, very appealing. And hence it is running for the last two centuries. Okay. Now if you see that this is made of, of animal skin. Okay, now a uh, converse of this instrument, which I have revived, is that of called the Radhika Mohan Veena. If this is the instrument, you will find that the skin is being replaced by wood. Okay, and the uh, standing bridge is replaced by a flat bridge. And 
and if I strum the sound, it is having a completely different kind of sound. So this is one. The next one. This is a much, much bigger instrument, very big instrument. It is a 250 year old instrument. It is also having a round sound, but, but the resonance is high and it also has a very low tone. Now, Now the difficulty was that there was no starting point. The starting point were only the museums, you know, where these instruments were lying. And some of the YouTube recordings where one can get very few recordings of say 19, 1910, I mean, whenever the tape recorder came into India, and and it was those those three minutes cast LP recording, and there were no musicians who used to play these instruments are alive today. So that was the biggest challenge. Now I started it from a very very different angle. I thought that what is the need for bringing these instruments back? Number one is definitely uh, to give the current audience the taste. But if I get to hold the current audience, I need to make these instruments contemporary, else they will not listen. Okay. So what I, I have done, now see, there were a lot of challenges the people or the makers who used to make these instruments, they are not there. The hardware which, were, which are required, say for example, in earlier days, one can get ivory with ease. One can get the horn of uh, rhinoceros with ease, but nowadays, it is absolutely difficult because these things are being banned by the government of India, right? So how can I bring up with those uh, kind of hardware? I have to look for the substitutes. And at the same point of time, not only the substitutes, but also to bring up with the, uh, an upgraded version of the sound. Then people only listen to it. Because if, uh, if I send the uh, YouTube links of the age old instruments nowadays to the current audience, even to you or to any of the students over here, no one will listen to it. I mean, they will match to match, they will listen to it for 45 seconds to one minute. And after that, they will just move on. Okay, so I cannot expect them to sit in my concert for one hour and enjoy it. So at the end of the, of, of the day, it is nothing but it is presentation. So the thing which I have come out is how to make the thing much more attractive. And not only attractive, if anyone wants to learn, it should be easier for, for them to learn. Okay, because gone are the days where the students used to go to the Kurukul, stay at the teacher's place for 10 to 15 years doing all, all the household stuff. No one has that amount of time. Okay. So these are the things that were there in, in my mind. So I had completely changed the structure of the instrument. The um, various dimensions. Okay. Suppose in earlier days, people used to get mahogany wood or the Assamese mahogany. I have replaced mahogany with barmatic. 
even the Barmatic is also antique, but I have to look for the original Barmatic and it is a time taking process. Nothing will happen over time. I need to get a uh, instrument maker and have to instruct him that what all the dimensions that one should take. And it is only possible if I have that engineering mind within me. Okay, now when it was developing that how can I change the sound? So I have to use a lot of sound systems which can filter out the sound and can give an advanced uh, an advanced kind of listening to the audiences because earlier days people used don't used to use the microphones they just used to, to sit in the ras darbars and play but nowadays there are a lot of high tech microphones which are available so i have to uh, study the sound engineering and have used the pickup system the uh, kind of sound mixer to give the optimum result. I mean, I have to uh, consult some other batchmates of mine in this respect, but at the end of the day, the kind of gears that I am using, I mean, I'm, I'm not only carrying the instrument with me, but also the uh, electronic gears are huge to give that amount of output. Okay, so it is a time taking process. I mean, and this is the way by which the things are happening. And so that the people, if I say them that this, this, is, this is a 250 year old instrument, so they can understand that this is the uh, refined version of the old instrument. Because the old instrument, no, no one can, can play, no one can make, but at the same point of time, it is attractive. I mean, it is just that we humans have evolved a lot in the last a lot of years. I mean, uh, you, everyone, the students have also evolved in the last five years. So thinking of 250 years, we cannot sit in, in 2022 and play something of some 1750. We have to upgrade the things. So, Jayadeep, what kind of problems you would have faced because uh, one uh, on the personal front or on the domestic front, also on the financial front, because uh, uh, this whole revival thing would have uh, uh, cost you a lot of time, a lot of money, and also uh, did you get the right kind of support from your friends, from your family members? So, what are the challenges you? faced while doing this job and how did you overcome with whatever challenges were in your way? See, um, uh, challenges are, are there in every job. Else why it can be regarded as a significant. Okay. The biggest challenge which I faced is the challenge of a proper maker. Because nowadays uh, uh, there are a lot of and they are all business minded. Okay. And many of these instruments, which uh, I am reviving, it involved a lot of trial and error. I have given one dimension, I have used the dimension, and then I found it is not attractive. And so again, I have to go to the scratch. Okay. So time is one of the constraints, makeup is one of the constraints. Okay, and nowadays the makers are, they, must, they are so business minded that they just want to finish off one instrument in one month and go to the, the next instrument because there are other customers are waiting. Okay, so I had to look for a different maker who will listen to me. And the main problem is that these makers are not very much educated. That is also one of the biggest problems. So educating them, giving them the right kind of hardware, giving them the, the instructions, okay. Then the amount of the time that used to take. So these are the things. Financial constraints, yes, it is there, but uh, we have to live with that. I mean, these, these instruments charges, around rupees 
250 uh, i mean 250000 3 lakhs one is because of the maybe because of the historical value or maybe because of the imports see because burma tea now i have to import okay now importing the the burma tea by legal process i have to play a lot of customs right which so these are the things but uh, it is working on uh, so thank you, uh, Jaydeep. Now there are students who are uh, waiting to ask questions to you. So I will uh, make the floor open to the students uh, to ask questions. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So students who uh, want to ask questions, please open your camera and ask your questions. Sir, my question, sir, is that the idea of playing rare instruments is that we are seeing that. बहुत क्लासिकल म्यूजिक में बहुत सारे ऐसे इंस्ट्रूमेंट हैं जो पॉपुलर हैं काफी पॉपुलर हैं बट ये जो आइडिया आपको जो स्ट्राइक किया रियर रियर इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स बजाने का वो कैसे आया और साथ ही साथ म्यूजिक जो है क्लासिकल म्यूजिक है जो खुद से सीखा जा सकता है या उसके लिए हमें एक्सपर्ट या गुरु की जरूरत होती है देखिए ये आई एम टेकिंग योर सेकंड क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट फॉर अ क्लासिकल म्यूजिक यू हैव टू टेक द हेल्प ऑफ अ गुरु because I started learning Saro from the age of four years and I had continued to learn under the same guru for last 32 years. Okay, so it requires a guru. It cannot be learned by self. Okay, you can only, the thing which can be self-taught is improvisation. It is just like your education. You need to learn that what is mean by public relations okay what are the theories of public relations you need to have an expert you need to have a mentor to say you but how you apply to it in your practical life it, it is completely different it is completely your own self-talk so that is your second question the first question is the idea of reviving the rare instruments see uh, i belong to the uh, in classical music there are a lot of gharanas or the school of music. Okay. So I belong to the uh, Semiya Sajahanpur gharana of music, which actually have, uh, I mean, actually had a lot of these instruments which used to be, uh, which were played in the earlier times. But over time, in the last 50 to 100 years, people have only looked for the popular instruments like. Sarod, guitar, or guitar, or like that. So it was my idea that if I want to take my gharana ahead, if I take my own school of thought ahead, so not only in one instrument, but in at least two, three other instruments for which it was known earlier also. Okay, so uh, production. Uh, now ask your question. Uh, is it a problem technically? I think someone has raised the hand. Greetings, sir. Myself, Ishika, sure. Uh, sir, my question to you is, uh, as you are an artist, uh, what values are you trying to instill in young learners like us? the first one is definitely the that is the thing which i have mentioned in the beginning of my uh, interaction that first of all if you want to be successful in any sphere not only in artist but also in academics or anything first of all you need to become a very good human being okay so that is one and not only that you have to uh give the value to the people who, with whom you are being surrounded by your teachers your parents that is a fast behavior that as an artist i have learned from my i mean from my, from my family or from my guru or from my schools whatever i have learned and that is the first thing because if you give the value if you start to give the value then you will get the value value back 
Okay, I mean, I can just give a very, very practical example in which everyone will laugh. Say, for example, if you give like and comment to, uh, to any of your friends, Facebook status or uploads, he or she will give it back the reactions, the like, the comments, wherever you will upload. I mean, if it is as simple as that in case of a social media, it is in a much more bigger sphere than the life. So the first value, the first thing that is that you need to give the value, you need to take the learnings, you need to get inspired from the people who are around you. Okay. The second thing is that you need to respect, you need to be proud of in whatever you represent. Say, for example, I'm an artist. I know that what Indian music means. Okay. What is the status of Indian music? And I am proud of that. I, I, I am proud to be a torch bearer of that particular race. Okay. So you need to be have Pride in whatever culture or whatever thing that you represent. So that are the two basic things that one need to know. Yeah. Uh, so uh, moving forward, uh, is there? Uh, yeah, Anjali, ki ask your question simply. Raising hand will not help. Sir, as I saw that you belong to senior genetic. Uh, 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 Senior Gharana, I have heard that it has some links with the Tansin. So how do is that? And can you tell something about your Gharana? Yeah, sure. Say, uh, earlier, if you look at Indian music, it is broadly classified into uh, three aspects. The first one is the vocal. The second one is the instrumental, and the third one is the dance. Okay. Now, uh, if you look at that, Indian music was there from the age of the Rig Vedas. But the drastic change that happened was during the 11th and the 12th century after the Islamic conquest happened in India. The main thing that happened was that along with them, they, the amalgamation of various you know, of Indian culture with the other Central Asia or the Middle East happened at that point of time. And this amalgamation has helped in the enrichment of the Indian culture. Now, coming back to the Senya Harana, say after Mia Tansen, every, every school of thought try to associate themselves with the Senya Gharana. I mean, Tansen and his descendants, either from the daughter side or from the son side, they used to call themselves as the Senya Gharana players. So we had, I mean, you will listen a lot of uh, Gharanas like Senya Mahya Gharana, Senya Rampur Gharana, Senya Gwalior Gharana. So it is actually a mix of two Gharanas. One is the, the Senya Gharana, and the second one is the place which is associated with it. Say, for example, in Sarod or in the instrumental music, the oldest gharana that is regarded as the Gwalior gharana. Now, in the 17th century, one of the musicians migrated from Gwalior to Sajahanpur and started a new lineage over there. Now, how a gharana is being formed? That is also an important question. I mean, many musicians don't know that how a garden is being formed. I mean, I cannot call myself as, as a Calcutta Gharana now. There is a particular nomenclature to know that how a garden has to be formed. The uh, rule is that within a span of 100 years, three generations have to bond and expire at the same place, then only a gharana can be formed. Okay? Uh, 
thank you, Jyoti, for uh, answering this question in so detail because you touched upon even such questions as to how uh, Gharana is. Yes, Pratyaksh, Pratyaksh wants to ask uh, yeah, Pratyaksh. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, so I was glad to hear you out throughout the session. And I have a question for you. So, like, as you have done your engineering and then your MBA, how did you manage to parallelly move along to separate yet so engaging parts like classical music, which you're doing right now? So, like, uh, just uh, what are the struggles you want to because you are likely came onto the, another field? And yeah, like, how is it? Like, the main thing is that you need to balance. See, the first thing that I need, I have to keep in my mind that uh, my career should not be dependent on only one particular aspect. I had mentioned earlier that you must be having a plan B and plan C also in the life. Okay. Suppose if you are doing a job, I mean, it is my suggestion, you love your job, don't love your company. Because company is being formed out of a lot of people and people might change, you will also change. Okay, so the thing which kept me going is that I love music, but it was the criteria which was being set by my family that you cannot take music as a career. Okay. But yes, I know that after my parents attained the age of 60, okay, I cannot survive with the kind of life that I am having. So I have to have something in my life. And people will, want, and if you want to be a musician, be a musician like that, that people will call you for the concerts or for the bookings. Okay. Then only it is possible, and it is only possible if and only if you make some remarkable work. Okay. Uh, okay. So, 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 thank you, Jaydeep. Now we are uh, moving towards the end of this uh, program. I would uh, like to request if you can accept us, uh, since uh, you are an instrumentalist that you are a performer. So, can we have some music from you that will be the concluding thing in this program? Since it is afternoon, I'm playing a very short, a very short and attractive piece in one of the afternoon ragas. Okay. I mean, it is this particular composition is also some. 150 years old. Sound is okay? Yes, yes.
accepted our request to play the sarod and we all enjoy it a lot and uh, thank you very much for sparing so much time to be with us for about an hour and talking to us on various aspects of music and to the work that you have done uh, in the revival of the musical instrument that's really a, a very remarkable contribution that you have made uh, to the world of music and we hope that uh, you continue doing uh, such things i mean many more uh, instruments will be fine will be revived further uh, and it will be a great service to the music uh, to the music lovers and we all uh, are happy that you are with us in this session and shared all your experience all your journey all your performances with us uh, with this uh, we we end this session uh, thank you jadeep to you thank you for all the participants in this session thank you the first impression that comes to our mind about any college tall buildings big classrooms large lobby areas thick books it labs assignments class tests and projects nothing besides that every hour minute second spent here help us carving and shaping our persona cultivating innovative mindsets for the challenging world Learning is a lifelong process. Sharing knowledge, inculcating values of life, spark the innovative horizons of mind. Fun and frolic is the nature of every nook and corner here. A daily dose of thrill, we are sure to get here.